Hi, I'm Stuart J. Perlman, and I want to welcome you to Stuart J.'s Lens, the tales of small business in McKinney. I hope you enjoyed today's tale. It comes straight from small business in McKinney. Well, actually, photography wasn't my first career. I spent 25 years in software development. Um, okay. My mother died of cancer when I was very small. And um, back then, we kept all our photographs or our pictures my family did on slides. Somewhere along the line, we misplaced or lost all those slides. So today, I don't have any pictures of my mother except for one before I was born. Portraits or photographs, that's how we tell the story of our generation to the next. So I can tell my children about their grandmother, but I don't have any way of showing them a picture. Um, and I think it played a big role in trying to decide that I, instead of being a software developer, I want to be a photographer. I hated sitting in the cube all day long, so at lunch I would take a camera I'd purchase and walk around take pictures of people, homeless guys, just something to spend a time. And somewhere along that I started getting interested in taking pictures of people. And the first thing I started doing is I started photographing high school seniors on a part-time basis. Um, high school seniors is what I specialize in. I do all sorts of families. I do maternity, newborn children, uh, even do four-legged animals, which is, you know, family members too. No, no three-legged animals? I haven't had one yet. Since I'm in the historic flour mill, which is a very unique setting and no one else can duplicate exactly. Um, but I've studied a lot of time trying to see what makes a good portrait versus a bad one. Even going back and looking at paintings from like, you know, the Renaissance time. And the thing i found is all good paintings or portraits have light in the eyes, no matter where you are. And um, I think that takes a lot of work to learn how to do that, whether you're lighting pictures inside studios or outside and not using the sun, but using a different kind of lighting that makes a difference in the way the portrait looks. Right. The Portrait Project we actually started about a year and a half ago. One of my clients, Megan Harris, um, came in for newborn portraits. And she was also had a friend or made an association with a lady who had a daughter with cancer. And the day that she got her portraits from me, she found out this little girl died. And um, it just really made a big impact on her how important photographs are. So she actually sent me an email and said, hey, I would really like to try to do something to make a difference. She said, my mother died of cancer. I've also had cancer before. I was lucky it was caught early. And the fact you, that you I know personally had I've, had, I've had cancer too, but it was caught quickly. She worked for a TV station down in Dallas, so she has some contacts with different people, charity organizations. She does a lot of work with that. So we have gone together with the Dallas Children's Cancer Fund. Um, they provide children for us who are fighting cancer. We also get other people contact us now. Um, last year we photographed 12 children um, and then we had an unveiling where each parent gets a large wall portrait. So we do raise some money for charity but that's not our goal. Our goal is to provide something for the parent. Right now we are on um, Facebook, facebook.com slash portrait.project. We photographed a little boy named Dirk uh, about two weeks ago. His dad's a firefighter in Dallas and um, he has terminal cancer on there. And for the first time ever I've seen it, the photo went viral on Facebook. I got killed, I got some pictures on my phone, new names and numbers that I don't know. People started sharing it and within like about a week over it had been in over two million people's news feeds, over two hundred twenty five thousand people had made comments on it, liked it, and we got tons of messages back to the parents and support, um, which was really wonderful. We also had a lot of people contact us saying, Hey, we'd like to start that same kind of project in our city, in our country. There's a lot more awareness of people who are following what we do to support you know other kids. We'll photograph 11 more kids um, in July and August. There's no charge, no okay. charge. We um, we last year we had a corporate sponsor, and this year we're trying to grow a little bit last more. Year in uh, September we had a um, event down in Victory Center. They get to pick their own music. Um, we had a couple of pageant winners who escort each child in, and they would get to unveil their portrait, and everybody could see it at the same time. So we'll do that again. The reason we choose September because it's National Children's Cancer Awareness Month. 
The biggest way is either if you know someone, a small child who's fighting cancer that lives in the Dallas area, um, if you want to make a donation to help fight cancer, those are two ways. And once again, if you go to facebook.com slash portrait.project, there's information on how to make donations to the Dallas Children's Cancer Fund in the name of the Portrait Project. Year, our first year we had a girl who was uh, in junior high here in McKinney um, and she was the day before she was going for her bones marrow transplant I actually photographed her and unfortunately she never came out of the hospital. Um, if you so, think you have a story to tell send me an email but I have to tell you up front it better be good. Uh,